Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, and welcome to my webinar. Thank you very much for Cytosmart and QCAN for the very kind invitation. And today I want to talk with you about our human organ growth conditions. My name is Dennis Plenker. I'm a research investigator in the laboratory of Dr. David Tuvesen, and I'm the technical manager of the Organet facility at Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. The topics I want to talk today about is the general organet usage in the laboratories around the world, our pipeline to generate organets, and why it's actually so important to harmonize our methods and how we actually get there through number one training, through harmonized media, and through matrices that are better defined. This all will in the end lead to more reproducible results. In the last couple of years, a lot of publications used organoids. Most of the publication used really ways for precision medicine approaches, as you can see on the upper left and down to the lower right. But as well, new biological functions can now be studied in 3D, which was initially um, impossible with the 2D derived cell lines. However, all of these organoids require a different media just based on where they were grown from. Our pipeline to grow patient wrapped organoids starts from a biopsy or a resection. We digest it to close to single cells. After this, we embed the cells in matrigel and cover it with um, specific growth factors and media. And once a culture really starts growing and we can expand it, we do first a QC, uh, which includes freeze and thaw cycles before we would even start doing sequencing approaches or further down the road functional analysis. We've done a lot of trainings and have trained researchers from more than 50 institutions around the world. However, when they go back to their home institutions, roughly 50% fail there to establish organo technology. And the most common issues that we've seen are coming from media or from the starting material that they um, get from their clinical departments. So there is, in our eyes, a big need to standardize media and to make actually as well media generation a lot more accessible so that if you are a small lab, for example, and you just need one key experiment to perform using organoids, it's a, a lot easier approach compared to where we are at the moment. Just in the lower left panel, after we've plated our close to single cell um, solution in matrigel, you can just see cell, small clumps of cells in passage one. Some of these cells have diluted out and organoids have formed and we call passage five as one of the key steps because a lot of cultures after pet strife are pretty much stable and do not fail anymore. So after we've frozen on our organoids, we would thaw them again and then would just follow up over the next couple of days if they really expand, which you can just nicely see in this three um, pictures on the lower right for panel, for that panel. In the upper right panel now, you can see one example, and this is plotting number of domes against days in culture when a culture really fails, so it's just static or even goes down. And really, really successful cultures really usually start to take off from the very beginning. And this dip at the end is again our freezing step here. The other issue I had mentioned was very few cells or like no viable cells, and this is something uh, where you really have to get back to your clinical department to really discuss how biopsies or resected tissue is handled. Other important components for organoid cultures, as I had mentioned, is definitely media. A lot of the organoid media is based on the ENR method, that means EGF, login, and respondin in the media. However, a lot of organoid cultures require as well Win3A and other factors. Most of the labs around the world currently use respondin and wind and noggin from conditioned media. 
in the case of PDEC, this is kind of a small fraction of the media, but it's very important because you can really expand cultures from human tumors or human normals um, when you have the right media conditions. However, if one of these media uh, components isn't working properly, you can just fail as well very fast. On the upper right now, you just see a comparison of one human tumor culture from pancreas cancer in human complete media, everything grows pretty much fine. If you just take out our spawn in and really shut down the wind signaling, everything dies. Same is true as well in normal organoids, which are even more sensitive. In human complete media, you can just see the very nice cystic organoids and you can see how the culture expands. In the middle panel, we've taken out our responding condition media and we constituted a recombinant responding that we received from Qkine and we couldn't see a difference and everything was really going very nice. And just as a control, if you just take out our responding from human complete media, you can just appreciate how the cells or the culture just die or you have a lot less cells in the culture. Other important components to really standardize organoids around the world will be the matrix. The current or our current gold standard as a basement membrane extract is matrigel. And you really have to remember that this is derived from a murin Engelbert Holm swarm sarcoma. And it has to actually get propagated in mice. So every vial of matrigel that you're using is derived from a mouse tumor. It really involves a lot of steps to make matrigel. You first have to decellularize it, and then you have to go down more than 30 steps to really end up with matrigel. So there is obviously the chance to get a lot of batch-to-batch -batch variability, and the protein concentrations will be different. And there are, are really still more than 2,000 proteins and 14,000 unique peptides uh, from the mouse tumor that can be found in matrigel compared to just the um, collagens, integrins, and uh, laminins that really make up the majority of proteins in matrigel. We are aiming really for a concentration of 10 milligram per milliliter. That's really based on PDEC. If you have a very soft tumor, obviously, you will need less protein concentration. If your tumor is even harder or more stiff, maybe like from bone tumor, then obviously you would might even want to think about a higher protein concentration. What we do really to ensure that everything works fine is keep seeing our uh, matrigel lot for all the time, really when we receive a new lot. And you can just see on the lower right here in this nice um, review in Nature Reviews material that was published earlier this year, the idea obviously is if we use matrigel, we are using a matrix that is less well-defined compared to a synthetic scaffold. And we would hope and think that we can even boost our success rates to generate organoids and make review methods uh, more uniform around the world uh, with a synthetic scaffold. When we tried, for example, um, different hydrogels against matrigel in tumor and normal organoids, most tumor organoids really worked fine in a hydrogel, uh, and we used one that either resembled integrins or collagen binding sites. You could just though see that the density, although these organoids are growing, is less dense than our um, matrigel control, and we really had as well tumor organoids that didn't grow at all in this hydrogel. For normal, and as I had mentioned before, you see these nice and cystic um, organoids in matrigel. However, a hydrogel, in this case, um, resembling integrin binding sites, led to really very dense organoids and nothing compared to the, the culture you see on the left with matrigel. So there is really a big need for as well synthetic matrices that really would work well. Just as an outlook, what would happen if we had to find matrix and media conditions, obviously, when we want to generate living biobanks 
our hope is to maximize, maximize success rates. In functional assays, you really want to minimize variations for the media and matrices so that if you, in theory, use this identical method, you end up with the identical results. Same is true, obviously, for transcriptomic approaches, that a harmonization between different laboratories can only be achieved with standardized media components and matrices. And then, obviously, a lot of people now want to go down the road for personalized therapies. And as well here, when you really decide about a patient's treatment, you really want to make sure that everything is standardized as good as possible. With this, I'm closing the session just with one comment. You do not have to actually generate organoids from scratch. We're currently building together with Artnik in Verona, the Hubert Institute, and the Broad Institute, and Welcome Sanger in the UK, and now as well Stanford and Wall Cornell, a biorepository that's called the Human Cancer Model Initiative. You can just now buy already a lot of different organoids from ATCC, and this is really an NIH-funded project that has really helped to, is, is meant to help the scientific community to work with organoids. We've now launched more than 140 models, and there are a lot more to come. With this, I really want to thank CiderSmart and Hurkan for the invitation to present some of my thoughts on organoids and where the field should move on. And I really want to thank you for your attention, and I'm looking very much forward to the Q&A section. Bye-bye.